Hey OCHEM students, I'm Ben Asman. Today we're gonna to do the second of our three experiments about acids and bases. Today we're doing titration of a weak acid. Let's get to it. Acids and bases, weak acid titration curves. Now today we are gonna be working on our first titration. A strong acid with a strong base has a very simple titration curve. You start off, you have all acid, you get to an equivalence point, and then you finish, you have all base. However, a weak acid has a more complicated titration curve. We start off with all weak acid. To determine the pH at this point, we have to use an ice table. Then we start entering the buffered area. This is where the henderson halfabach equation comes into play. Halfway through the buffered region, we get to the equilibrium point, aka half equivalence. This is when we have equal amounts of the weak acid and its conjugate base. And at this point, the henderson halfabach simplifies to the pH equals the pKa. Next, we get to the actual equivalence point. This is when we've converted all of the weak acid into its conjugate base. And then we finish when we have only our strong base left. Okay, we're gonna start by getting our reagents together. First, we're gonna need our sodium hydroxide. Now, today's uh, is this concentration. Yours may be a little different. Make sure you write down whatever the concentration is given. In this case, we're gonna to to do three titrations. So I'll need about 75 plus a little bit more for uh, rinse. So I'm gonna take about 100, just a little bit less. We also grab some phosphoric acid. We don't need nearly as much. If, it's, if it ever has trouble coming out, you might have to loosen the lid here. And yet at a different sink, we will need to grab our acetic acid as well as our weak unknown acid. That'll be right here. Should be plenty. So next, we're gonna need a burette. We wanna clean this out. So we will need a waste container right there. Take our burette here. Make sure that it's closed. Take our burette here. Add some in. Swirl, swirl, swirl. Pour out. Repeat. Let some drain. And when you get sick of that, you can just pour some out. Okay, now I have prepared here a slightly over elaborate rig, but that's because I need to film this as well as do it. What you will mainly need is a stand with a burette holder, a clamp that can hold the probe. I have it temporarily over there, and a stir plate. 100 mil beaker with a stir bar. Next, you're gonna to wanna to calibrate your actual instrument. Of course, I'm gonna, this is just a sped through version of it. Uh, if you wanna see again how to do this, there's a link now on screen and in the description down below to the previous video. Now we wanna take our sodium hydroxide solution and we're gonna fill up our burette here. And we wanna fill this exactly to the zero mark. If we mess up, we wanna add some more or take a little bit out. Now, as the procedure is basically the same for all three, I'm gonna show you primarily how to do the first one. And so we're gonna take our 100 ml beaker with a stir bar, and we're gonna take acetic acid, and then we're gonna use a 10 ml pipette to add in well, 10 mils. And as always, we suck up a little too much, change to a finger, and lower it down to the mark. There we go. Lovely. And now we can transfer that into our 100 mil beaker for use later. And as always, we do not blow out the tip. We're gonna add the beaker to the stir plate right under the burette. We're gonna grab our DI water. We're gonna add that in as well. Here's the dilution, nice and simple. And now we're gonna bring in the pre-H probe and make sure it's fully submerged. Now I'm gonna position this a little off center so when this is spinning, there's no contact between the stir bar and the probe. Here's that same thing from a different angle. And now we're gonna get started so now we're gonna go through and add half a mil of sodium hydroxide at a time 
between each one, clicking pH, waiting for the reading to finish. That I will stop blinking when the reading is finished. And we will go through that until we've gone through the entire burette. Once that is done, we can remove the probe from the axle solution. We can go ahead and grab our waste container and some DI water, use a DI water to wash it down. Then we can grab a chem wipe and as always dry it. And I'm gonna store it here in its container while I set up the next part. That's it, we're done.